Welcome to the Sabenko Climb Reverse Tutorial for Wipeout HD. The reverse variant of Sabenko Climb is much more difficult than its forward counterpart. All of the trademark sharp corners of Sabenko Climb are still there, only this time you need to tackle most of them going downhill. As a result, you'll be going much faster and you'll need to be far more nimble on the air brakes. The good news is though that at least for the most part you can see the corners coming. So let's start by having a look at this track on Venom Class. And now let's go through the track step by step. Almost straight away you're thrown into a complex corner series. A light right leads into a long left hander which then goes into a shallow chicane series. The good news is though that if you can get the approach right to the chicane through the long left hander, you can pass straight through it without having to deal with any tricky corners. So to begin with, tap the right air brake to take you into the first bend and then hit the left air brake to swing the craft through the long left hander. Allow the craft to drift towards the outside to hit a speed pad. On exiting the left hander, move the craft over to what appears to be a break in the wall on the right hand side. There's a very small peak in the track here. If you get the approach right, you can barrel roll from it. As you reach the peak, tilt the craft slightly over to the left and barrel roll, and you should be able to take the entire chicane series in one go. Then when you clear the last part of the chicane, side shift to the right to pull yourself back in line with the track. Now if you have a turbo coming up to the chicane series, it becomes even easier. If you use it on the approach to the chicane here, you can actually jump it entirely. You'll also be able to perform two barrel rolls as a result. Once you use the turbo, you need to line the craft up so it will land in the tunnel. Be careful not to go too far over to the right, otherwise you'll slam into a building. As you land, the track will drop out from underneath you. At this point, it's possible to perform a second barrel roll. If you're going to do this though, you're going to need to slam the left air brake hard on landing. Unfortunately, I didn't figure out this second barrel roll until after I recorded this video, so I can't show you here. However, I do recommend performing it as it's a great way to improve your lap times. As the track section ahead is heavily sloped, it will be quite difficult to control the craft on landing. Ideally though, you want to try and keep the craft as close to the centre of the track as possible, as there's a triple speed pad taking you onto a long straight. If you're drifting too far over to the right wall, a left side shift will correct you. And now we start a series of sharp downhill turns. The first one here presents you with a peak, so you'll be able to barrel roll down towards the first corner. However, I find the amount of time saved because of it is minimal. In fact, just on the other side of the peak in a weapons race, there'll be two weapon pads, one on the left and one on the right of the track. It may be more worthwhile to push the nose down and go for one of those rather than a barrel roll. If you do wish to barrel roll, approach the peak from the right hand side of the track. Once the track starts to slope, pull the craft over towards the left apex. This will give you the height to barrel roll. Make sure that you aim for the right hand side of the track as you exit. The moment the craft lands, slam on the left air brake and start turning into the corner. If you're too far over to the left when you do this, you're going to end up crashing into the apex. Once you enter the corner, left side shift to pull yourself away from the right wall. You'll need an extremely good line to avoid hitting the wall at all, however if you just clip it, it shouldn't prove any problem. After exiting the left hander, move back over to the centre. How you tackle this next right hander depends on whether you need to take a speed pad or a weapon pad. The speed pad you can see ahead of you and is on the outside of the corner. In a weapons race, there'll also be a weapon pad directly to the right of it. As you land, slam on the right air brake and turn the craft into the corner. It should naturally drift to the outside, which will take you to the speed pad. If you want the weapon pad, you'll need to start turning a little bit earlier and you may need to right side shift as well. 
As you exit that corner, immediately side shift to the right and then hit the left air brake to pull the craft level. You want to be on the right hand side as you go over this peak. As you hit the speed pad, slam on the left air brake, swing the craft into the corner and then left side shift when you reach the right wall. If you're in a weapons race, exit to the right hand side for a weapon pad. As you go over this peak here, move the craft as far over to the left as you can. There's a sharp right hairpin to take you back onto the final straight. There is actually a cheeky method you can use with this peak to take this hairpin extremely quickly in a weapons race. If you save an autopilot for this final hairpin, jump over the peak and barrel roll. Whilst in mid-air, use the autopilot. You'll get the boost from landing the barrel roll as well as the benefit of being able to navigate the corner flawlessly due to the autopilot. But let's go back to taking the corner manually. As the craft starts to descend again, slam on the right air brake and keep it held down all the way through the corner. You should see a double speed pad on the right hand side close to the exit to the hairpin. Try and direct the craft towards the nearest one and then right side shift to hit the other one as you go down the straight. And now finally, let's see the whole track done at full Phantom Class speed. Thanks very much for watching and good luck with the game.